Live from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, NBC News covers the launch of Space Shuttle 4. Here is NBC News correspondent Tom Brokaw. Good morning, everything. Uh, good, good morning, everyone. What I wanted to say is that everything is going extremely well here at the Kennedy Space Center. We're now at T minus 39 uh, minutes and 31 seconds, and all is going well. As you can see, the Space Shuttle 4 is on the launch pad. The astronauts, that's TK, Thomas K. Mattingly, known as Ken Mattingly to his colleagues, and Henry Hartsfield, are in the orbiter. This is the last in the test flight series of the Columbia orbiter. And it has a number of unique dimensions to it, including a military payload for the first time officially classified top secret. We'll be talking more about that. It is scheduled to land after 113 orbits of the Earth next Sunday, July 4th, in California. And President Reagan is expected to be there for touchdown. Launch time this morning, 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, and we expect that to go off on schedule. However, as we have learned from past launches, there can be an interruption or two. Last night, the possibility of some danger to the Columbia orbiter as a result of a fairly severe electrical and hail storm over Cape, Ca Cape Canaveral here at the Kennedy Space Center. Let us show you a picture of what happened. It looks like something from Dr. Strangelove's laboratory, a bolt of lightning nearby, a fairly intense, as I say, hail storm, and some of those protective tiles took some damage. They were dinged, so to speak, about 400 of them altogether. But NASA managed to get them repaired. And now to describe that repair, here's our Mr. Fixit, Robert Bazell, our science correspondent. Bob? Good morning, Tom. I was here yesterday afternoon when that storm hit. It was a typical Florida afternoon storm, but it was very strong, and it was centered right over the launch pad. NASA audio release. The storm, which began just after 4 PM yesterday, brought heavy rain, hail, and some fierce lightning. The lightning set off fire alarms on launch pad 39A. But when fire trucks arrived, they found no problems. Soon afterwards, however, workers on the pad discovered that the hailstones had dented some of the thermal protection tiles on the Columbia's surface. You can see the dents as white spots on the outside of the tiles. Inspection teams who had been summoned from home checked out the shuttle skin and decided repairs were needed. The huge scaffolding structure was rolled back into place so the repairs could begin. The Mr. Fixit aspect was that they didn't need to replace any of the tiles last night. What they did was they spackled them, much the same way as you would fix some plaster in your home. In fact, the, the work on that, the tiles was completed two hours early, just after midnight, with no interruption to the countdown. So as of now, everything is still going very smoothly. It looks very good for a launch on time. Tom? Thank you very much, Bob. We'll be talking about the clock, of course, during the course of this next 90 minutes that will be on the air here for the launch of Space Shuttle 4. Let me remind you that there are two times that we are talking about. We're now officially on the clock at T minus 36 minutes. But that does not mean it's going to launch in 36 minutes because there are two 10-minute holds built into this next hour before the scheduled liftoff at 11 a.m. this morning, Eastern, da uh, Eastern Daylight Time. It is the Soyuz T-6 set off from central Russia for a rendezvous with the Soviet space station that's been in orbit for more than a month. On board the Soyuz T-6, two Soviet cosmonauts and the first non-American Westerner to fly in space, Frenchman Jean-Luc Chrétien. Chrétien was the first one to come out today as the Soyuz docked Friday night with the space station. The cosmonauts reported that everything went smoothly. Back to you, Tom. Thank you very much, John Hart in New York. And we've just heard once again here at the Kennedy Space Center that all is going satisfactorily, as they're putting it in an understatement toward an 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time launch this morning of Space Shuttle 4, the last in the test flight series of the space transportation system. We'll be back with more from the Kennedy Space Center after this. Here and hot, perfect except for a ground fog. It was a welcome sign from late yesterday afternoon when hail peppered the spacecraft like birdshot from a double-barreled shotgun. The hail made some 400 dimples on the Columbia's outer skin. The skin was repaired during the night. After having breakfast, the two-man crew, Ken Mattingly and Hank Hartsfield, suited up. The suits they will wear during the launch are fire-resistant, similar to those worn by professional race car drivers. 
It's an agonizingly slow ride to the launch pad, a nine mile distance, slow realizing that within a short time they would be traveling at 17,000 miles per hour. At the launch pad, they donned their helmets and gloves and moved into the spacecraft. Like kids going to Camp Charles in the event they get hungry while waiting for the liftoff, there's a ham sandwich and an apple in a pocket of each flight suit. We talked about the uh, dimpled tiles on the spacecraft, Charles, and this is a typical tile. There are about 30,000 of them, and while they're terrifically heat resistant, they are very, very fragile. You can probably hear the skin crack, and uh, that's what those hailstones did yesterday, late afternoon during the storm. But we're told uh, they're all repaired right now. Mark, always before we've been able to tell people every minute detail of these missions. For the first time, we're not able to because there's a there's something classified in the cargo bay this time. Is this the, the start of something new and big? It's the start of something new and big. The military will be the shuttle's single biggest customer in the foreseeable future, using about one-third to one-half of all the uh, shuttle missions, Charles. And, uh, the and uh, it's a not-so-secret secret because uh, we have heard what the DOD payload is from congressional testimony a few years back, and uh, we've heard about it and read about it uh, through the media. And what the Department of Defense wants to do now is set a policy for the future, knowing that the secret of this mission is already out. Uh, um, assuming that uh, the Department of Defense is going to be the biggest uh, user of the space shuttle in the future, will there still be room if you and I wanted to send up some sort of scientific cargo and could afford it uh, for, for uh, NASA to accommodate us? Well, I think so. There are so-called getaway specials, Charles, and those getaway specials allow citizens such as ourselves, uh, if we can come up with uh, $3,000 or so, to put small payloads on board. And I suppose if you wanted to sign up, there'd even be room for you in the not-too-distant future. <laughs> uh, I noticed the... Uh, the uh, space shuttle does not this time fly over the Soviet Union. Is that, do you suppose that's a connection they didn't want to upset the Russians with the military payload? Well, I uh, don't think so. There have been various questions asked about where the shuttle will be going and won't be going, and uh, we were told rather definitively that uh, the flight path of the shuttle has nothing whatsoever to do with the Pentagon's payload on the shuttle. Challenger will fly next January while the Columbia gets an overhaul. Challenger and Columbia look exactly alike, but there are some differences. Challenger is lighter, stronger, and more roomy than Columbia. It will carry four people and a larger payload. Another difference, the Columbia has a modern ejection seat system to provide the crew with an emergency getaway. But the Challenger will not carry ejection seats for several reasons. Primarily taking the seats out leaves more space, and NASA points out that the Columbia flights have been so safe that it's like not giving parachutes to passengers on a modern jetliner. A satellite will be the only cargo on Challenger's first flight. The satellite will be used by NASA for communications with future space shuttle missions. This same satellite will be shared by commercial users. On Wednesday, while Columbia is still in orbit, the Challenger is scheduled to roll out of the hangar for the piggyback delivery to Cape Kennedy. Meredith Lewis, NBC News, Palmdale, California.